In this video, we're going to have another look at desktop installer. It's been a while since I covered it, and I thought I'd give another look. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Okay, right, I'm going to put a new fresh install of FreeBSD 13 on my test machine just to show you that right from the outset you can get a, a desktop up and going easily. So there's a new install. Right, we're just going to log in. And because this is a new install, we'll have to um, initialize or bootstrap the, the package repositories. So pkg bootstrap hyphen f. And we'll do that. You could, of course, just put pkg update and it does the same thing. Right, after doing that, I'm now going to install a boot environment manager. Because I want to make a backup of a working system before I start doing this. In case if it goes wrong, you can roll back. And that's what I love about ZFS on FreeBSD. It's just got this wonderful tool. So first, we're going to make sure there's none available. So it's going to do a list. Uh, there's none there. There's a default one, which we uh, is a system that we're using. I'm going to create a new one. Call it test one. There we go. And now it's there. And we're just going to activate that. And then we'll do a quick reboot into that. And the reason for doing this is if it goes wrong and it, it doesn't work, I can just easily roll back and we could start again without actually having to reinstall again. It's a wonderful time saver. Right. So let's log in. We should be under the new copy, as it were. Again, we'll just check. Yeah, there we go. Look, test one. So now we can actually get on with the main thing. If we search for desktop installer, or just desktop install, there we go. So it's in there, we can now install it. So pkg install desktop installer. I won't forget to put the er at the end. And there it is with auto admin, which is a useful tool, which we'll look at a different video actually, not this one. So there it's installed, and now we'll run it. There are several instances where you run it and you can do a test and then uh, you re you know rerun the script, as it were. And I'll show you that when, when we come to it. Right, there's a lot of text to read. Uh, I'm not going to read it all, but desktop install automates the configuration of a FreeBSD desktop laptop system. You will be guided through the process and ask some basic questions as well as a few that may require some thought and research. Desktop installer may fail at some point due to broken ports or changes in the base system since the last release of desktop installer. If this happens, you can manually fix the issue and simply run it again. Please report any failure of this nature. So, uh, we're given an option. Just the essentials or advanced options. I'm just going to run the, uh, just the essentials. We can keep things nice and simple. And it says, FreeBSD by default installs packages from quarterly snapshots, which provide an added layer of quality control beyond the normal ports. Quarterly ports snapshots receive only bug fixes and minor updates. So really it's saying, do you want to use slightly older but more tested software? Or, I mean, it's only slightly old, it's not really that older. Or do you want to use more cutting edge or bleeding edge packages, but there may be regressions or bugs introduced into that. So, uh, in this case, we're going to stick with quarterly. Um, I really don't have any problems using the newer stuff, but if you want to stay with the older, that's fine. Right, switch to the latest binary packages instead of quarterly? No. The default is no, and I think we're just going to go with that. Okay to replace ports? Yes, because we didn't actually uh, install ports, so this will do it. Uh, update and reboot the system? Uh, not on this occasion, because it's uh, freshly installed, and I know that th uh, there really won't be any updates available yet. FreeBSD 13. And we haven't installed anything, so there's nothing to update. So, there we go. Let's press no. And here's just some information. Uh, time to select a desktop environment. And it does really go in that KDE is, is large, Lumina is small, but uh, slightly buggy of 1.6. So you can either choose no desktop software, CDE, which really uh, for nostalgia only, Cinnamon, Fluxbox, Non3, Non3 Lite, ISWM, KDE5, Lumina, 
LXDE, LXQT, Mate, Window Maker, and XFCE4. I'm going to choose ISWM because really it keeps the install time down and ISWM is really, uh, there are other lightweight ones, but ISWM really is lightweight. It, it returns a certain functionality and yet is very light in resources. So seven it is. Configure wireless networking, uh, no. And scan for additional sound devices, no, because the sound will work okay. And press installation of Xorg in your screen. Blah, blah, blah. This can be a very long process. Okay. So, we'll press to begin. And of course, I'm going to fast forward all this because it really did take a while. Not an extraordinary amount, but a while. Right. It says reconfigure X11. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with the defaults and press enter. Choose a display manager. Because we've chosen ISWM, I'm going to choose XDM. Run guided graphics driver selection. I will. And it's going to try and determine what graphics card I've got. Uh, okay. For recent NVIDIA GPUs, yeah, I'm going to press number one. And it's identified as a GT710, which is correct. And I'm going to go for the NVIDIA Driver 390. Not the latest, latest one, because it's not a latest, latest card. But a 390 is... It should do. I think the latest one's 460, but we'll go for 390. Just put 390 there. And we'll let it do its thing. And reboot. Uh, no. In this occasion, I'm not going to reboot. Because I can already tell it's, it's loaded in. It asks you twice just to make sure. No. Now it's asking you whether or not you want to test X11. I'm going to leave the values as they are and just choose no. Forward the display. No. Trust all forward. No. Uh, no again. And that's it. Press return. Enable EM. Yeah. Okay, we'll enable that. It's going to start the display manager. And there it is. Oh, very nice. Very fancy. I've never seen XDM with reboot, shut down, and restart at the bottom there. That's really nice. So I'm just going to put in the details. It really won't log in yet. Nah, it hasn't done. So I had to kill the process to carry on, but we'll just do what it says. We'll just rerun the desktop installer to finish the process off. And just go really through what we selected before. And it should. Yeah, there we are. It's carrying on now, which is pretty cool. Uh, install uh, keep pass. No. Nope. All right. Uh, install. No, I'm not going to install them. Firefox. Yes. Chromium. Yeah, might as well. Thunderbird. Okie dokie. LibreOffice, of course. VLC, yes, why not? And DVD, CSS, yes, of course. And we'll let that carry on. Some software was installed, build, building from source. Okay. You must use auto admin or auto update. System to ensure packet, okay. I'll type in, got it. And I think that's it. I think I think we're cracking. Let's uh, reboot. This isn't unnecessary, but, you know, we will do that. Log in, and we should have a nice little display ready for us. Will it do it? Oh, that's nice. I, I never get sick of looking at XDM. There's something about the motif design. It just, I really like it. So we'll type in RoboNuggy and password, and everything should log in. Ah, okay. Well, in this case, what we'll do is that we'll just create a nice little uh, XNIT RC. I've switched to another virtual desktop, and I'm just going to log in that way. X in it RC and just put XEC ISWM. It should do it on this occasion. And then switch back to the one that we was at. Try it again. Okie doke. Password. Ah, still not doing it. Okay. Right, there's one more thing that we can do. And that is to create or edit a X session. Now you shouldn't have to. Usually, um, oh no. Well, there's no file there, so we'll have to create it. Usually, uh, X in the RC is just a sim link to X session. In, in so I've seen that in plenty of cases, so um, we'll have to create the original. There we go. Again, we just put XX ISWM. And if this doesn't work, I don't know what will. Let's try it one more time. 
Oh, I think we have it. Yes, very nice. We're in. So, yeah, it was just a missing X session. I don't know whether I missed a step in the actual install. Maybe I did. I probably did. Uh, but the, it's, that's a trivial thing, really. Okay, now, of course, we should have all the programs, etc., that we installed afterwards. There's your LibreOffice. Very nice. And there's your writer. I'm not going to type in it. I always do, but not this occasion. The desktop installer is is pretty cool. Uh, it does automate a lot of the things. It, it it automates the installation, but also the configuration. It fills in a lot of the rc.conf that you might need and the uh, devfs uh, entries, etc. For auto mounting and uh, various whatnots. I mean, you can do that by hand, of course, manually, and I, I think I prefer to do that. But if you're in a rush or you wanna or you you know you don't know the ropes of it yet, this is a really good little script. Desktop installer. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.